Uta here of Trans Widow Uta Hagen YouTube channel and of WordPress blog Uta Hagen Grass Widow dot WordPress dot com where you can use the contact form to request my survey 20 questions to ask a trans widow. Why am I holding these oak leaves? I was just out in the curated woods. <laughs> which is also the title of my memoir published with iUniverse.com slash bookstore. Uh, remember, you can always give it as a gift anytime, not just at holidays, <laughs> early birthdays, half birthdays, <laughs> etc. So I'm, I'm showing these beautiful oak leaves, which have fallen from, I believe, my center oak. I have a few oak trees, maybe four. Anyway, I am uh, showing them to you because I found out this fall that um, oak leaves will uh, decompose into beautiful soil. And um, I had made some piles and kept them all in place from so they wouldn't blow away from the wind um, uh, with using uh, lines of branches in kind of a U shape and raked up uh, the um, the rocks that are in my woods because I don't want it to be slippery for me walking through my woods and so on when it gets wet and uh, so I enjoy raking. It's it's way better than using leaf blowers. <laughs> but um, oak leaves are really great. And I one thing I want to point out to you, look how big this one is. Um, one thing I want to point out to you is that um, they uh, kind of hold their shape and their form and their you know fabric longer than other leaves, and that is just another part of the strength of um, oaks, our, our Native American oaks. Um, okay, this is actually trans widow testimony uh, of Apple White. She is number 55 to answer our uh, 20 questions to ask a trans widow survey. And uh, the questions regarding children and were children uh, told to say this or that are not relevant um, because she did not have any children together with dude. Um, so uh, I am going to um, read <laughs> the really interesting answers though. And thank you so much, Apple White, for choosing that pen name and, uh, you know, responding and being a part of our community here. Okay, number one, was his cross-dressing a revelation or your discovery? It was a revelation. Uh, she said it was a confession that came completely out of nowhere. And that means that 24 of the 55 of us um, had a revelation. I had a discovery. Um, did he tell you it's under control, not frequent, and then it escalated out of control? So this is how she responds. I tried to be understanding at first and asked for him to talk through it slowly so I could get used to everything. But he immediately demanded my full acceptance of him cross-dressing in public and in front of my friends. Yeah, okay, so what it is sounding like is one of these cases where there is a pattern of his um, impersonation of his wife or, you know, of you, of the woman. He is wanting to impersonate you and he wants you to be a willing participant in this. Uh, did he select a therapist and stuff about uh, how did the therapist act? She said he refused therapy for years and, uh, oh, so apparently maybe there were some issues in the relationship before she knew anything about this, but he refused to do any kind of therapy and this didn't, didn't change that. Um, 
Uh, it's interesting to think about what we know of the childhood of our husbands, our ex-husbands. Um, but I have to say, I, I really tried to make these 20 questions about our experiences. And um, I think there is actually a lot of information that we could give to the mental health profession about the true stories that we know from husband's past. Oh yes, I just wanted to remind uh, to uh, mention that this this here is my last um, orchid flower, <laughs> and um, and you know that's another nature artifact that I wanted you to see. Um, did he put money in a secret account or other venue and spend it on secret things? Uh, I know he was spending secretly, but I don't know on what. And um, one thing I will uh, suggest, and actually ask you, Applewhite, to um, uh, contact me again with any more information of how did you find out that he was spending secretly. Um, I think the patterns of that, of those discoveries, um, are telling and important. <clears throat> Did he wear your clothing or makeup? Yes. So that's um, 22 of us out of the 55 of us whose uh, husbands were doing secret spending. And uh, 22, yes, he wore her clothing or makeup. Um, the reason I added makeup was because one of us said, well, he couldn't have worn my clothing because I'm a size six and he would be, uh, he's six foot something and wouldn't fit into my clothes. Um, so, but uh, she saw him putting on her eyeshadow or something like that. And so, you know, this lack of boundaries about personal items, about possessions, um, which, which, you know, I, I know that some women share makeup and stuff like that, but, um, I consider makeup to be, um, very personal and not something that I would care to have somebody borrow. So, um, again, it is a violation of boundaries. Six, did he suggest or cajole you or coerce you into sex role play? Uh, whereby you are to use a strap-on or other sex toy and be a male in bed. Simply, she said, yes. That's 16 out of 55 of us. Um, and uh, she mentioned the coercion again later. Um, so there was no therapist involved. Um, there wasn't... Uh, okay, so did he defame you? <clears throat> Uh, she said, not in court, but he called me a bigot and portrayed me as such to our mutual friends. So that's eight out of 55 of us. Um, uh, okay. He claimed to friends that she was abusive, that Apple White was abusive to him. And this is just the narcissist um, pattern. They always have to be the victim. They always have to be seeking the attention of others. And um, they especially are seeking to drive what friends you had uh, away from you. And uh, this has even happened to women um, where he drove, well, you know, the thing, the abusiveness with children, of course, I've already talked about, but they will also say things to family and drive other, you know, more distant relatives and so on, um, away from you. Um, so he did not attack her physically. <clears throat> um, and there was coercion about unwanted sex, um, but not, uh, physical, uh, sexual assault. And it, it, what I really appreciate is our honesty. The honesty of we 55 who have answered these questions is quite um, telling. I mean, she's not willing to say that he physically forced her into um, unwanted sex. 
she said coercion. Um, did you live below the poverty line or require governmental or family financial assistance at any time after the end of the relationship? Yes, I was financially abandoned and made homeless after his revelation. I had to stay with family and move away from my town and career. I lost everything. Uh, there was nothing involving the clergy. Um, he was encouraged by social media groups um, to uh, coerce her and attempt to coerce her into staying. That's what my question was about, uh, clergy trying to join in the coercion that you're supposed to stay and pretend you are, in quotes, a lesbian. Um, Okay, there was nothing about Mother's Day, um, so I can skip all of the questions that have to do with children. Um, did you lose a set of friends? She said, I lost my entire life and had to move away. So, yes. And um, I really do feel that um, this part of the situation, you're completing this cycle of telling us and my posting this on my channel, a trans widow testimony, becoming a trans widow who makes the testimony of what happened to you, I think and believe and have faith that it helps all of us to move on to do this. Um, okay, and then um, he was definitely an AGP, an autogynophile, a man who gets uh, turned on sexually by the thought of himself as a woman. Um, as time went on, I realized that he wasn't attracted to me at all. That's also um, a common pattern, but more attracted to pretending to be me in every aspect, every detail. I felt like he was trying to become me or steal my identity. The whole experience was so surreal. I cried for weeks. I lost everything I had worked so hard for. And this one is pretty short. Um, I just, I really want all of my subscribers to know that it's important to like and share these stories. It's very important to us trans widows. It's very important to the children of and the other family members of these individuals who are sanctioned um, for behaving very badly towards the people they supposedly love. The uh, me uh, mental health professions and um, uh, medical professions need to hear us. They need to know what they have caused us with their sanctioning and encouraging of really unacceptable behavior by these uh, psychiatrically ill individuals. Get yourself out in nature and have gratitude. <laughs>